oh, if I could just let go, if I could just get past her or him, if I could just get past that, that thing that happened to me, it happened to me several weeks ago. Another thing, it really happened to me maybe months ago. If I could just get over it, I'd be fine. How can I let go? I'm going to invite you to stop letting it go. Stop letting it go. There is a better way. Today, we're going to find out that the better way, how we can do it, how we can move on from any situation, and we don't have to spend thousands of hours meditating to get by it. You're going to find out why, and you're going to find out how. Now, we're going to draw a line in the sand because you're going to stop learning to let go and learn how to get by it because there's a better way, a better way for you to move on and dwell in and manifest what you want to and get over whatever it is you need to move on from. My past, my future. We're moving on. That's a better life. But first you say, I need to get over him or her. I need to let it go and move on. Or let them go out of mind and get past it or get past them. Then I'll finally be free. Again, I state unequivocally that getting past your past, moving on, whether it's the unsatisfying relationship, the job that you would love to have that you don't feel qualified for, your poor health, conditions that you feel that you have to get by mentally and emotionally before you can move on to what you want. Well, I'm here to tell you it's not about letting go. Your focus is on the wrong place. In this video today, we're going to focus on what you can do to move on in a positive way, leaving your unwanted past behind. All great teachers emphasize that we become what we think about. From Neville Goddard to Earl Nightingale, Bob Proctor, and many of the wise ancients for thousands of years clearly stated that what is of primary importance is what we are conscious of being now and exclusively focusing on that concept of who we want to be as being that person right now, living that life right now, and simply replacing the past and all that has come before. So we're going to clearly answer, how can I leave that unwanted past behind, and how can I replace it? Neville Goddard's amazing book, The Power of Awareness, is going to assist us in doing that right now. Neville stated, you must be conscious of being healthy if you are to know what health is. You must be conscious of being secure if you are to know what security is. And when I use the word consciousness, you could replace that with awareness of the belief that you are because you must become conscious of it, actually being it. Therefore, Neville goes on to say, to incarnate a new and greater value of yourself, you must assume that you already are what you want to be. Now think about it. If you already are in consciousness what you want to be, there is no need to replace an unwanted past mentally and emotionally first. It will automatically be replaced because those bridges of incidents that need to and will lead to your fulfillment of your new confirmed and fixed desire of the life that you want will naturally unfold automatically. Notice the following from the book, The Power of Awareness, Chapter 3, where Neville Goddard states, Man's chief delusion is in his conviction that there are causes other than his own state of consciousness. All that befalls man, all that is done by him, all that comes from him, happens, happens as a result of his state of consciousness. The man's consciousness is all that he thinks and desires and loves. 
all that he believes is true and consents to. That is why a change of consciousness is necessary before you can change your outer world. So you're tied emotionally to the event, to the person, to the circumstances, and the only way that you can truly make the change is to no longer be conscious of, aware of that circumstances, and actually replace it in your consciousness with what you do want to believe, and as it states here, what you love, desire, what you consent to, and that is your self-concept. So can you see that by continuing to think about it, wanting to let go of it, you're actually perpetuating it? Because you're, again, your effort and your strain and your stress and your mentality is that you need to let go of it. And so your focus indirectly, whether you like it or not, is still focused on it. So to make those necessary changes and to be able to move on, you need to spend your time investing your thoughts, your mind, and your imagination and focusing on what you do want and seeing that as the you that you wish to be. So rather than letting go of something, you're taking hold of what you do want to be and seeing yourself as that person. Follow me? Let's continue with Neville's thoughts. Notice the second sentence begins, you must imagine that you are already experiencing what you desire. That is, you must assume that's your expectation, your assumption. You must assume the feeling of the fulfillment of your desire until you are possessed by it. And this feeling crowds all other ideas out of your consciousness. I want to read that one more time. You become possessed again by what you desire. And when you are possessed by it, this feeling crowds out all other ideas out of your consciousness. So you're not letting it go. You're actually crowding it out by taking hold of what you do want, how you do want to think, feel, and act, and be, what you do want to receive and have happen in your life. That becomes your focus. And then whatever was in the past automatically drops away. So whomever or whatever or the circumstances that you no longer want to experience and think about automatically drop off. They automatically fall out of your consciousness because you're no longer aware of them because you're so filled with what you are focused on that it automatically is replaced. Now follow the screen in the second paragraph here as Neville continues. He says, if you do not believe that you are he, that is, the person you want to be, then you remain as you are. You remain stuck with that feeling of needing still to let something go. So the question arises, how do you get by it? How do you do it? Well, this is the way you do it. It's through faithful, systematic cultivation. That implies habit. It implies a process. Neville speaks about this in The Power of Awareness on the page before you where he says, through the faithful systematic cultivation of the feeling of the wish fulfilled, desire becomes the promise of its own fulfillment. Now the systems or, or habits that you need to develop are exactly what I teach if you've been following my channel. It's a way to actually make your mind over, your thinking process, your self-concept, how to develop it through the right habits. So remember, a change of consciousness, what we're aware of, is necessary for a true transformation to take place. So you change your state of consciousness by renewing your mind, renewing it according to what you want to be feeling, thinking, your concept of yourself. You have to dwell in that, and you have to systematically cultivate that. And that takes you putting in the effort, as I've spoken about in my other videos, 
We do that first thing in the morning by what we meditate on, what we dwell on, how we predetermine the day we're going to have and actually write out the person that we are becoming, the qualities that we desire, the qualities that we're developing, and how we're going to conduct and think on that day. Now, the difference between just scripting about your goals and desires and what we teach with Neville Goddard is that you want to envision it as already yours. And so when you write out your day, you already imagine the people you might meet, the challenges and and, uh, goals you have for that day, and you see them turning out already as successful. You see yourself at the end of the day reflecting back on your day and how successful it was. Now, you do the same thing with your short and long-term goals. Actually write them out. However, you want to write them out in the first person, present tense, with all the vivid sensory perception of your imagination, imagining what you would feel and how it will be achieving your goal that day, that week, and your long-term goals. What it will be like to actually achieve them. So you write that out, and then you meditate and envision, actually feel into them and dwell in them and from them as already yours. Now, what Neville says next is really going to help you shift, shift into the right thinking and be so focused again on your goals as accomplished as yours that you will be so involved with them that you won't have time to think about your unwanted past. I'd like to stop here just for a moment and say that I hope that most of you are getting the picture of how valuable Neville Goddard and his teachings are. All of his 10 plus books can be found online, many for free as downloads or PDFs, and you can certainly purchase his books or the collection of all of his books on Amazon and in other outlets online. You can also Google information about him, including his lectures, hundreds of which are online for free. Now, I'd like to encourage you to actually begin to read those and listen to those because this will enhance and help make sense everything I've been giving you. Here's some additional wonderful thoughts about moving into your dream and creating the ideal of the person you want to be. You assume that you are already that person. As Neville states for us here, you do this by assuming the feeling of your wish fulfilled. Fulfilled, notice past tense, fulfilled. It's already yours. You imagine it's already done. He says, by desiring to be other than What you are, that person wrapped up in trying to let something go and not being able to move on, right? Rather than being there, you can create an ideal of the person you want to be. And then assume that you are already that person. And here's the promise. If this assumption is persisted in until it becomes your dominant feeling, The attainment of your ideal is inevitable. Then you'll no longer need to be concerned with letting it go because you have become that new person even before you see it developed fully in your life. It is my hope that you make this a way of life, actually training yourself and your self-concept to be the person you wish to be by reading by studying, and by applying what you learn and putting it into play into your life. Because if you don't apply it, if you don't do it, all of this information is simply entertainment. And I want this to actually be a stimulant for you to take action in your life, to begin feeding your mind, meditating on the right things, and imagining yourself having and being the person and having the life you wish to have now. So indeed, stop letting go. Yes, stop always seeking to let go of, but rather replace and crowd out your unwanted mindset, emotions, and thinking by feeling yourself 
with the right attitude and beliefs through your meditation and study, and you too can achieve your dreams. Mm-hmm.